Sure, and there's some crossovers, people I know that know him very well, um, that have been around him on the football field, um, and I rely on those people as well. So yeah, I've, I've watched him continue to grow as a coach. Um, I love being around him, and uh, I've always stayed in contact. We've uh, socially kind of continued to run into each other at conventions and at uh, social activities with coaches and ADs, and um, I really think highly of the work he's done, and uh, like I said where I started, I'm just thrilled that he's our new leader. Well, I think he was certainly someone that came to the top of my mind. Okay, I, I have to think about that stuff kind of year round now. It feels like, and so I always have several people that I'm kind of keeping an eye on, and who's there and who might not be there. Uh, Brent's one of the people that I've always thought very highly of. So he was on that early, you know, group uh, of people that I said, "Hey, where, where would we go, and who should I talk to real quick?" And, he was there. So with the way the world is now, with the transfer portal and the 30-day window that opens and all of this stuff, did you feel like you had to move fast? Uh, hey, swift, uh, you know, efficient process, important. I'm not going to move fast just to move fast. Got to got to make sure you move the right way um, and do the right things and get the right person. There's a lot of good coaches out there. I had to get the right person, the right coach for this football program and the right leader for the football program. So, but there's no question the world has changed a little bit, so it's compressed and you want to move quickly, you want to move swiftly, you want to um, move so that it's in the best interest of our players and our student athletes. That's what I'm doing. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not intimidated or concerned about that, but it's certainly a factor you've got to keep in mind. Are you interviewing as soon as Sunday? Pardon? Were you interviewing as soon as Sunday? Uh, I get my timeline right. It's been a, felt like three weeks, but I guess it's only been three days. But um, yeah, I think we were you know talking to a lot of people uh, on Sunday. How many people? You know, the initial group I'd say was around you know that was seven to ten people early on. Kind of went narrowed down to four ish, five drop down to two, you know, kind of, as you guys would expect, but, you know, and moving pretty quick through those areas. So this being January instead of December, does that take a different context to a search? Do you have to approach it differently now that it's not the usual coaching search time of year? Well, again, I, it, you know, I think you need to be ready at any time of the year now in the new uh, the new landscape that exists out there. So you've got to be ready to move quickly, uh, efficiently, effectively, have people in mind that you want to talk to. People you can go and talk to. I, you know, I talk to a lot of people outside of coaches, people that I trust that are in the business on the NFL side, the college side, uh, retired coaches. You know, so, I mean, I'm talking to those people all the time. So, it, it, yeah, you got to be ready to move. It's, as far as balancing... Trying to stabilize the roster, we're trying to get a long-term builder for this program. Where was your mindset on that going into this? Look, uh, I I want someone who can lead this football program that first cares first and foremost about the student athletes and the players. Um, it's people first, as Coach Brennan said. You know, and we'll, if we take care of the people side of this, everything else can fall into place. Um, I want someone who cares deeply about people the players and their ability to be successful. And uh, that's the kind of person I want. Dave, were there any new things that stood out to you? Well, certainly he's, he's grown as a coach over the last three years. He's grown as an individual. He's been successful. He's been in the heat of things, made decisions. So anytime you, you can lead a program and you continue to do that, you learn more. You, you've been in the, in the fray and in the battle, and that makes you a better coach, a more tested coach. So regarding Abor, um, obviously that was kind of an issue with the previous coach contract situation. What's different about this that you're able to move the ball forward and you know, get done what you need to get done as it pertains to that you know, bureaucracy? Element? Well, we have a vacancy. We need to fill the vacancy. The board has been supportive of that, and we've done that. That's it? That's simple as that? Hey, I'm a, I'm a front, front windshield guy, okay? I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking through the rearview mirror and trying to analyze the road kill. Not going to do that. When you when you talked to the players for the first time on Sunday, you said uh, we were, you said the next time you'll meet with them when you're introducing the new head coach. How confident were you in the process and the speed of the process? That you I was very confident. Okay. I mean, again, 
I, I, I'm, I, I just say it like it is. And with our players, I'm very honest. Uh, I think that's the only way you can be with people, and certainly with players and their families. And uh, I told them what I thought was important. I told them that I needed them to trust me. Uh, I'm in it with them. And the next time I was going to talk to him, it was my hope. I don't think I said that I was going to walk right in with it, but my hope was I would, I'm going to give you, come in here with somebody that can lead this program. And uh, so that happened within 24 hours, I guess. Maybe I lose track of the hours. Sorry. <laughs> do, you, uh, Go ahead. do you intend on having uh, Coach Brennan at the basketball game tonight to uh, introduce to the, the crowd? I think he's going to be there tonight. I think we're trying to work through some things, but I think that's definitely a possibility. There's no way to predict the future, of course, but you have mentioned how you feel like you have to do this every year or be ready all the time. Do you feel like in Brent Brennan, because he loves this place so much, he's been here before, relationship with Dick Tomey, that this could be a long-term relationship? Well, that's the intent uh, for a long-term relationship, somebody that will see it through, that's really committed, wants to be here, has a strong appreciation for the program and a love for the program that I think is very apparent. Um, and I think that goes a long ways. And uh, uh, definitely committed to the players and committed to making this program the best it can be. I, I think it's a long-term uh, deal. That's my my take on it. Dave, I promise I'm asking this to not have you already renegotiating his deal. I, I, I say this in the sense that you, with the financial circumstances that have been facing the university, that have been facing the athletic department, do you feel you guys got a value out of this too, financially speaking, considering where the contract is compared to where and I know you don't want to go backward, but compared to where the reports were that it would have been potentially as recent as a week ago with the prior coach, do you guys feel like you financially put yourselves in a good situation with this considering everything going on? I think every situation is its own. So uh, the, the situation with our previous staff is not related to this one. We went out, we're hiring the best coach under the best circumstances that, that we can. Um, the reality of this situation is, hey, uh, because of some of the coaches' movement um, through the buyouts, there's some resources that we gain. Um, we've made a very prudent financial decision. But as I've said, we're going to continue to invest in our primary revenue sports, and a big one is football, and we're going to invest in football. So not stepping back from that one in instance. You got five and a half from Washington in the transfer buyout. Is that something you could put towards the contract or the system? How does that kind of work? Yeah, that'd be utilized as resources that we'll reinvest into the program. Okay. Yeah, the benefits of having a salary pool, the current one, and how it's set up right now for Brent's assistance? Yeah, you know, um, quite frankly, I think. Um, this salary pool conversation that is never quite right um, kind of goes on ad nauseum. Uh, Brent and I are committed to put together the right packages for the right assist assistants that come in here. They're going to make our program better. So there's never been a limitation. There's really never been that limitation in the past. So we, we're fully invested in getting the right people uh, and doing that in a really financially effective and efficient way. We'll continue to do that. So is that well, number a little fluid then on the contract or is that the number? Um, yeah, I mean, again, that's a that's a point that we put into the in the agreement that he knows where where we are and what we're committed to. Um, but you know, we're going to do what's right for the program. What is every, your, and you just can't predict the whole thing. What is your message to the players who might be on the fence about whether to stay here or go somewhere else? Look, I, I think the players want to be here. I think uh, they love this place. Um, Everybody has to do what they think is right, and uh, we fully res I fully respect that. But um, it's an intense brotherhood that has been developed here. Um, they've had so much success. Um, the, the risk of splintering and giving that up rather than staying together and elevating to a higher level, I think everyone should very carefully consider that. Um, and we've got good people. We've got really good people coming in to lead this program and connections to some that have been here uh, in the past. So uh, we're, we're moving forward, and it's going to be a championship-level program. So we're going to do everything we're committed to. Time for one more question. Put on 